when we think of augmentation of our body, of our sensory systems, of our physical body in space, we've been doing that since before um, recorded history. What does it mean to be human? Do we all have a right to be that kind of human? And who should be the gatekeeper to whether or not we're allowed to be one kind of human or another kind of human, i.e. augmented or unaugmented. When people talk about augmentation, um, they, they mean actually different things, and in the ethics space as well. So yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about kind of what, what does that mean? You know, it, it kind of has this implication of, of, of there being a norm and you're going, you're enhancing, you're enhancing above a norm, right? But of course, what is normal and what is baseline? what has been a sort of ongoing issue in the um, hearing and deaf communities and the sort of interface between those is a kind of good example of um, why that can be difficult when the term normal is imposed from the outside. So cochlear implants, so, so these can be implanted at, at a very young age and they effectively re restore or, or allow an individual to have hearing, to function in the world as a, as a hearing individual. The typical response from a hearing individual is say, yeah, when kids are born um, who are deaf, right, like of course, let's give everybody cochlear implants. It's crazy not to. And they're saying, no, we don't have a deficit. Like, this is, this is who we are. It's a major issue in bioethics is, right, like what happens if deaf parents have a kid and they don't want to give that child a cochlear implant? So who has the right to make that choice, right? Should it be, should the doctors intervene? Should it be the right of the parents to say, no, we want this kid to be part of our culture? Who's to say what's normal for someone else, I think, is, is really the point there. So in terms of the state of the art control, yeah, let's think like 10, ten words per minute is maybe like the state of the art. It's way better than, than nothing, you know, if, if you're paralyzed. Like you can do a lot if you can type 10 words a minute. But it's kind of excruciating really? at the same time. So, so from your perspective, what are like the engineering hurdles? One is the recording technology itself. You know, right now, state of the art is recording about 100 neurons simultaneously, and there are millions of neurons just in your motor cortex. It's, it's way orders of magnitude lower than the actual brain area that you're recording from. I think that's, that's a really good point, and that's talked a lot about in ethics. That's been an issue with deep brain, with deep brain stimulation that's been implanted for Parkinson's disease and for other enhancements, right? So, how do they change your identity, your sense of self, your sense of agency, your sense of your control over your actions? And should we, be, should we, when we are testing and researching these devices, should we be taking into account not just the physical side effects, which are kind of the standard measure, but should we be taking into account these other ways that these devices may change our identity and personality? And that's, that's actually just been a recent move of bioethicists and neuroethicists to say, look, we need to be thinking about these things as we're researching these products.